All right, college algebra kiddos. Uh, this section, 4.3, is probably going to be at least two videos because we have to talk about quadratics and graphing them, and we're going to talk about two methods. Um, so we want to make sure we cover each one of them thoroughly. So here we go. First of all, we're going to talk about what is a quadratic function. We already know this, but we're going to formally identify it as a function now. We're going to graph it, and then we're going to find extreme values, your max and your min. So first things first, what is a quadratic function? The technical definition of a quadratic is any function of the form ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are real numbers, and a cannot be zero. Because if a is zero, that's gone, and you have a line. So you've got to have that in there. Obviously, you know the quadratic formula, and that's where that whole thing starts from. Um, just a little side note, the quadratic function always has the domain of all real numbers, because it's not a radical and it's not a rational. So when you're asked to find the domain here, shouldn't even have to think about it. It's not a radical, it's not a rational, so it's all real numbers. So how do I graph one of these things? Method number one, we're going to use transformations in stages. Um, it involves using all the different transformations that we talked about back in chapter three, um, shifting to the left and to the right, or up or down, or uh, stretching it or compressing it, so forth and so on. To do that, you have to first get it into what is commonly known as vertex form, it looks like this. Um, H, K is my vertex, and A is our compression or stretch factor, okay? Um, so let's start with one that's already in that form and just talk about how to do that. Um, and then we'll do one that's a little bit tougher and you'll see why maybe some people this method is not their favorite um, because it's a little bit more involved when you actually have to complete the square and get it into vertex form. Not everybody loves that. So we'll start with one that's easy. If it's already in this vertex form, how do I graph it? So let's grab a graph board up here. Let me get this bad boy done. All right. I want to graph that. I know my basic parent parabola will start there. Um, has 0, 0, 1, 1, all right? Negative 1, 1, 2, 4. Right? Negative 2, 4. That's my basic parent parabola, right? Like we talked about back in section, or in chapter 3, I guess I should say. And now this particular parabola has shifts horizontally and vertically, right? My A is 1, so the shape isn't going to change. It's not going to get any wider or narrower, but um, it's going to move to the left or to the right and then up and down. Remember that anything that's inside here is a horizontal shift and the opposite of what it says. So I'm gonna to go to the left, three, and then any, anything out here is a vertical shift, exactly what it says it is, so up, five. So we're basically gonna to go to the left, three, and up, five. So every single point, left, three, and up, five. Boop, 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 boop. There's my vertex. Boop, boop, boop. And so forth and so on. You get all your points on here after you shift every one of them to the left three and up five, and there's my new parabola. For me and for a lot of people, just to let you know this, um, until you really get the hang of graphing it using this method, it's a really good idea to put that parent parabola on there. Then you can just kind of shift all of your points, kind of like I did there. Makes it nice and easy to do. Um, so there's an example of one that's already in that vertex form, so nice and easy. But what if it's not? What if I asked you to graph 2x squared plus 8x plus 5 using method 1? And you think, well, in order to use method 1, I have to have it in vertex form so that I can perform all of those shifts. And I got a little bit of work to do. So if I tell you f of x is 2x squared plus 8x plus 5, I got to get it in vertex form first, which means I have to complete the square. I know that my vertex form, f of x, is a times x minus h squared plus k. So I got to complete the square to make this x part look like I want it to look. So we got a little bit of work to do, so let's get going. To complete the square, I know that. Um, I'm not really worried about this. So I guess I can put it on the other side if I want to, as long as I remember to bring it back, okay? Or you can hold on to it over there, but a lot of people aren't comfortable holding on to it over there, so they just move it on to the other side. It's kind of weird, but I need it over here on, uh, out of the way. All 
also I know that in order to complete the square, my lead coefficient's gotta be one. So I'm gonna factor out two of my x terms here so that I have a manageable square to complete. Now that I've got that set up, if you will, I got this out of the way over here on the other side, and I pulled out that two so I can complete the square. Let's just go ahead and complete the square. Remember to do that, we need to add the number here that is half of this number squared. That's what completing the square does, because remember we're trying to make a perfect square um, trinomial, and then we can write it as the square of a binomial, right? So that's what we're trying to do. And the pattern is this number is half of this number squared. So half of four is two, two squared is four. So the number that I'm gonna add here is four. At this point, you just have to basically remember that golden rule of algebra that if I do something to one side of an equation, I have to do it to the other side. The thing you gotta be careful of here though is this is not just four, it's four times two. So it's not four that I'm gonna add over here, it's eight to keep my equation in balance. Okay, and that's a little bit of a thinker, uh, I guess, if you will. So now I have f of x plus three over here equals two times, and now I can write this as a perfect square. It's x plus two squared, right? Last thing I have to do is I have to get it f of x back alone, so I'm gonna subtract three and get that sucker over there. There we go. So two times x plus two squared minus three. Now I finally have it in vertex form, so we can go over there and graph it. Um, again, I'm gonna start with my parent parabola, but one thing is gonna be different this time. My parent parabola is going to have an A, a compression and stretch factor of two, so that means, yeah, my vertex is at zero, zero, but remember, I don't, I'm not going one, one, I'm going one, two, because all my y values are doubled because of this. If this were three, they'd be tripled. If this was a half, they'd be divided in half. So one, one is now one, two. Two, four is now two, eight, um, which is here. And then same thing on the other side, negative one, two, negative two, eight. So my parent that I'm using has that stretch, I'm putting that stretch factor included in it so that I've got the quote unquote hard part out of the way. Now all I've got to do is apply my shifts. I've already done the compressing part, so now I've just got to apply my shifts. So I already did this, check, we already made it narrower, right? This means I'm gonna go left, two. This means I'm gonna go down, three. And here we go. So every one of these is going left, two, doo -doo -doo -doo. and whoops, down three. Left two, down three, I went left two, down two. Where's my eraser? So left two, down three, left two, down three, left two, down three, left two, down three, and left two, down three. So here is my new parabola. If you're ever doing these on your own and you're just not sure if you completed the square right, if you shifted it right, if you compressed it or stretched it right, you have a tool at your fingertips that you can use any old time to check these bad boys out, and that's Desmos. So you can always use Desmos just to check and see how'd you do, okay? Um, I'm gonna end this video here because we're at about nine minutes already, and the second method I wanna have on um, its own video, and I don't wanna make this one too long, so that'll be it for video number one. Video number two, we'll just graph using the other method, and here we go.